Hello, Greg. Hi, nice to see you. You too. We've often spoken about the relevance of gender as a director. Mm -hmm. um, when Barbie shattered glass ceilings by joining the Billion Dollar Club, it changed things for women directors. Talk about that relevance. It was something that we, we always had hoped for as um, a filmmaking team. Margot was a producer and me um, directing and and, you know, we, of course, wanted the film to connect, but I don't think even we could have anticipated the way in which it did connect and the sort of passion that the audiences had for going to the movie theater, dressing up, it, going again and again, it, doing it, really experiencing it as something communal. And I think that the thing that's exciting about it is that it is, you know, proof in the pudding for you know, female-led films, female-directed uh, films, um, movies that are inescapably seem to be, you know, directed towards women, but also men, you know, love and go to. And that seems to be an amazing thing to have been part of. And also that I'm just happy that there's another example. Um, it's certainly not the only example, but another example that people can point to and say, well, this worked, it made money. And also beyond that, it's also just, um, I mean, I, I obviously I love this movie, but it's also not typical in any way, not just being about, you know, directed by a woman, written by a woman, but also um, it's a strange picture. And uh, and I think that what was so marvelous was that everyone said, yeah, I'm I'm strange too. I, I I I resonate with that. You wrote the script, and one of the things that you did was you reverted to the original concept of feminism, which is freedom of choice, not conditional inclusion. Why did that resonate with you so much? The movie is about so many things, but ultimately, the choice that we wanted to give Barbie and the story we wanted to tell was the the beauty and the pain of being human. What what that means of of choice and of consciousness and and of uh, how how brief it all is. When you did Little Woman, I was crazy about the way you composed your picture. And I know you were influenced by the great art of the time. Now you have created another incredible image. What were your visual prompts? What were you going for? see the world with new eyes, see the world that I'm creating with, with new eyes and try to find a visual language that, uh, that deepens the story and echoes the story. And I think one thing we started with in terms of visual references were really 1950s soundstage musicals. But I mean, one, because I love them too, because they mirrored the time in which Barbie was invented, which was 1959. So, you know, the, the colors and the camera work of, um, you know, Vincent Minnelli or Gene Kelly musicals or Oklahoma, th there's like a way in which the there's an awareness of the camera. It's not the invisible camera. It's the camera that you are in a relationship with as a performer. So that's that was part of it, especially in the beginning in Barbie land. And then Another another look that was you know fascinated me in that regard was also this idea of um, constraints that you'd have based on what was available to you. So even constraints of um, if you were shooting a car and then you'd have to use something like rear projection uh, to make it look mo like it's moving, that you're only going to set the camera in one position. So even Rodrigo and I talked about this very. He referred to it as an innocent camera. Um, and it is there's a sort of frankness and innocence about the camera and there's no kind of raked angles or anything uh, that's uh, around a corner also because there are no places to hide in Barbie land but that kind of um, squarely on look and we you know we shot it in um, the Alexa 65 large format because we wanted it to be almost you know to the edges of the frame. It was spectacular, joyful, and I, as a woman, thank you for this movie. Thank you. It's nice to talk to you. See you again. Bye. Bye. Bye.